nerds, welcome to my channel. Today I'm filming my belated Elementathon wrap up. So if you don't know, Elementathon was a readathon that ran from the 6th to the 14th of April. It was themed around the four elements, so earth, fire, water and air. And you basically had to pick a book for each prompt and pick two for your birth element. So I will link my TBR video for Elementathon down below where I explain the challenges in more detail um, and it was hosted by Anna from It's My Birthright so I'll also link the Twitter page for the Elementathon in case you want more information about it. But yes, yeah, so for this readathon I read three books which I'm pretty happy with actually. I planned to read five but I didn't think I was actually going to read five and I almost read one for every element so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I had two 3.5 star reads and one four star read so again not too bad and I'm just going to go through the books and tell you what I thought of them. So the first book I finished was The Devil in the Deep by Ellen Datlow. Um, this is a short story anthology collection it was edited by Ellen Datlow. This is the second of her um, anthologies that I've read she's really prolific she's done loads and loads of them. This was my one of my 3.5 star reads. I really enjoyed it actually. I think I liked it better than her other anthology. The basic premise is that all the short stories are to do with the sea and they're kind of, they're mostly horror stories with bits of fantasy and some sci-fi and other elements but they're primarily meant to be horror stories. This was pretty good on the whole. Um, my favourite story, hands down, was by Seanan Maguire and it was called Sister, Dear Sister, Let Me Introduce You to the Sea <laughs> which is like the longest short story title ever and uh, it was basically about um, a girl who... a girl wakes up and she is being drowned by her sister and that's the starting point for that story, that was really good. Another one I really enjoyed um, was Shit Happens, <laughs> which was this weird humorous horror story about a guy who has gone to a conference that takes place on a cruise um, and a mysterious affliction attacks or strikes people at that moment. Um, I've got a full blog review post which I'll link down below if you want more details about the other stories. They're all spoiler free so they don't spoil the stories but they give you the basic premise of all of them. I would definitely recommend this collection. It was less horror filled than I wanted which I found is a common theme um, and a bigger problem was that many of the stories had good basic premises but they didn't execute those premises particularly well. A lot of the stories kind of got confusing and muddled. I like my short stories very simple and straightforward, um, particularly horror. I want it to be a nice simple story that packs a really strong punch and these took some really good ideas and kind of went in weird directions with them um, which meant I often lost interest in the stories towards the end. There wasn't anything in this anthology that I straight up hated um, and there were quite a few that I did really enjoy even if the endings weren't great I still enjoyed the majority of the story. So yeah it was quite a good little anthology. The next was my four star read and that is Campfire by Sean Souls. This I gave four stars. This is one of those books where I have to clarify I gave it four stars. I don't think everyone would enjoy this book by any means. So this is a horror story and it is about a girl who goes camping with her family and kind of this group of people she meets up with every year who are like extended family so friends of the family that they've been meeting up together for years and years and years and the at this camp they decide to tell scary stories and there's a guy who's um like their guide for the camping trip and he tells them that any scary stories told under the full moon come true they tell a couple of different stories and then they tell a story about these people in the mountains who murder people and carve antlers into their foreheads and then the next day one of their group is found murdered with antlers carved into the forehead so that's the kind of setup for this. I love this book it is classic cheesy horror um, 
it's very well written actually and I, it had so many enjoyable elements if you're a fan of kind of classic horror so the it was a really nice touch that they told several different scary stories to each other um i wasn't expecting that going into it and it was a really enjoyable extra perk that i didn't think i was going to get the characters are mostly flat but not too flat they're kind of horror book flat if that makes sense so they've all got characteristics but they're not really very complex which is fine because the focus isn't about the characterization in this book um the ending i'm not going to spoil anything obviously but it was a little bit of a leap in logic because there was it kind of did what i expected it to do but then there was a really obvious way for someone else to be involved in it who wasn't involved in it and it doesn't make sense that they weren't involved in it because they should have been if you paid attention to the plot that probably won't make any sense to you if you haven't read it um but basically the ending was less sensical than it could have been and i'm not sure why the author did that i assume they didn't realize what they're implying earlier on maybe i'm reading too much into it but yeah i would definitely recommend this book if you enjoy old school horror if you want a bit of fun with your horror you're not after a really really complex or really well crafted plot you just want classic horror setup some decent payoff um and yeah i i'm i'm glad i loved this so much i thought i was going to end up rating it lower and it was just it just ticked all the boxes for me so I haven't been saying, but I think it's fairly obvious anyway. Uh, the Devil in the Deep I read for the Water Element, Campfire I read for Fire Element. The next one was my Earth Element read, and that is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. I actually listened to this on audiobook, um, which may affect my review of it. I gave it 3.5 stars. I always tend to say if I've listened to something on audiobook, because especially with this one, I'm going to talk about pacing and it would be a different experience if I read it because I read much faster than I listen so that's just something to bear in mind. So Pet Cemetery. everyone at the moment is reading this book because obviously the film's just come out. I did like this book. I'm gonna, um, I will say in all my previous videos I've accidentally spoiled the entire plot of the book because I didn't realise it was the entire plot of the book so I'm sorry for that. Um, I've never read this book before. I'd only, I only said what I'd heard about the book and it turns out I'd heard more than I thought I did. So the basic premise of this book um, is that a man moves with his family to this new town and they live next to this busy main road and near their house is a pet cemetery which is this little bit of ground where all the kids of the town have been burying their pets for years and years and years. Um, while most of his family are away visiting their grandparents, our main character is at home and his daughter's cat is hit by one of these trucks and killed. Um, and then his new neighbour suggests that there might be a way to bring the cat back because she'd be very upset if her cat died. And that's all the plot I'm going to give. Um, to be honest, the movie trailer spoils more anyway. But yeah, I'm just going to stick with that because I don't want to ruin it for anyone else. And it did affect, knowing as much as I did, did affect my opinion of the story. So yeah, Pet Cemetery, I liked it a lot. It's got a lot of the strengths that Keith Stephen King always has. So if you enjoy Stephen King, there's no reason you wouldn't enjoy this. My main problem was the pacing. Um, I thought that the climax of the story was over far too quickly and had far too little time dedicated to it in proportion to the rest of the book. I loved, loved, loved the start of this. Um, I thought it built up well. I liked where the story was going. It set up a lot of interesting things. And then the kind of middle bit is where it started to go a bit more downhill. I'm going to do a spoiler section in a minute, but I'll warn people before I do that. So this is just the vague little bit. But basically, the middle started to go downhill and then the climax was over far too quickly. 
and I just wanted more time dedicated to the climax and again this might be a because it was an audiobook um it was only two hours I think the climax out of the whole 14 to 16 hours which for me is just too low a proportion for it and the other thing is that because I did know the whole plot going in and I didn't realize that was the whole plot it might have been that I expected more from that plot as opposed to basically because I knew it was going to happen I thought that was the bulk of the story and it wasn't the bulk of the story so that's just two things to bear in mind uh, other things I can talk about without spoiling it um, characters are alright standard Stephen King characters it had some really good moments I think that's all I can say without spoiling it so I'm going to do my standard spoiler thing my hands gonna stick up awkwardly in the air once it goes back down um, you're fine to carry on watching so spoilers are starting now so after the cat gets resurrected um, which is basically what happens so there's another graveyard by um, the pet cemetery which is like a secret graveyard and things that get buried in this graveyard come back to life but they don't come back right sorry about that I just had to chase a wasp out of my room so if you heard any buzzing in the background that is what it was so anyway <laughs> um yeah so the cat uh so there's this other graveyard which if you bury things in that graveyard they come back wrong so with the help of his neighbour he buries his daughter's cat in this graveyard and the cat comes back to life first problem I thought the cat was going to come back evil and it doesn't it kind of comes back creepy but I just had too so much sympathy for the cat so I don't know if everyone will feel the way I did but after the cat comes back no one is nice to it anymore because it basically has this weird smell of death about it and it's just kind of like a zombie cat so it's just kind of glazed over but it does do weird things like it does purr sometimes and it tries to show affection and they just keep describing how they keep shutting this cat outside and uh, yeah I don't know I had too much sympathy for the cat I don't know if it's just my strong love of cats or King just didn't write the cat uncomfortable enough but that was my first kind of issue um after that uh the main character's son gets hit by a truck and dies and then he buries his son in this graveyard and his son comes back to life and that's the kind of plot that i've been spoiling accidentally um so this is the section that i really wanted more time dedicated to because his son comes back to life and he's like this weird demon child and then he kind of he kills the neighbour and then he kills the wife and then he gets injected with adrenaline or something because the main character is a doctor and then he's dead and that's just kind of the story. I just wanted more with the kid alive. I thought there was so much more interesting stuff that could have been done with that. Um, I would have liked to have known his wife's reaction to her son being alive again beyond a brief split second like seeing him. And then he kills her. I would have liked to know his grandparents' opinion because his grandparents are quite a um, important part of the story up until that point, and then they just kind of aren't in the story anymore. And um, yeah, I just wanted more. I thought it would have been a more compelling story if the son had come back to life, and at first he just seemed kind of normal, and then the main character has to explain to people why his son is back to life. And then it becomes more sinister and then he starts murdering people and doing all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I don't really know if that would have worked as a story. I guess then you have to you get bogged down and him explaining to people why his son's back to life and all that stuff. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I just wanted more from the book. Um, I think that's it, to be honest. I think that's all the stuff I really wanted to talk about. I might do, um, I'm just going to put my hand down now. So yeah, so that's all the stuff that I really wanted to talk about. Uh, I might do a comparison after I've seen the new movie, um, like I kind of did, I did it for ages ago for the movie It. Um, I might do it for Pet Cemetery because I know this is, even after finishing the book I watched the trailer and there were some massive changes. So yeah, I might do that, I'll see how I feel after seeing the movie. 
But yeah, that is all the books that I read for Elementathon. Um, let me know if you took part and if you did what you read, because I really like the idea of this readathon. I hope it runs again next year, because I'd love to do it again. Um, or even sooner, I guess it doesn't have to be a yearly thing. Um, let me know if, you, if you've read Pet Cemetery, what your thoughts were, because I know quite a lot of people have read this now, and I'm curious, because I was avoiding everything until I read it, and now I'm curious to see what people's opinions are of it. Um, thank you so much for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did please give me a thumbs up, it helps me out massively, and I hope to see you next time!